All right, so let's finish up our ramp model by adding the railing that sits on top of the deck. All right, so let's jump back into Houdini and get it done. Okay, so uh, first things first, we haven't saved our HDA in a while, so uh, let's right click on this guy up here in the breadcrumbs here and uh, just hit save node type. Alrighty, so uh, uh, let's start off the railing. Basically, I want to have the railing that, you know, kind of borders the backside and the sides of the deck up here. And so we already have that curve created. All right, so let's go find that guy. I believe it's uh, this guy. Yeah, this one right here. All right, so just make sure that it's a single curve. Yep, that is the one we want. All right, so let's put a null node here so we can get started with the railing. So I'm going to say out uh, railing curve. Actually, let's say out deck curve just to make it a little clearer. This is coming from the deck. All right, so let's start it off by dropping down our object merge node here, and we'll say get uh, deck railing. All right, and I'm going to drag and drop that null node into that object one slot and then turn my transform to none because we don't need to import any transform information. Okay, so first things first, let me actually uh, template. I'm going to go all the way down here. I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard and template my uh, ramp here. Now, a couple things we need to take into account with this. All right. Uh, first thing is I don't want, you know, the railing to start right at or inside of the coping. That wouldn't be very realistic. It needs to be back here a little bit. All right. So we could take care of that pretty quickly with a carve node. All right. So let's do that. So I'm going to go and drop down a carve node and hook this guy up. Now you'll notice right off the, the bat, uh, it's already starting to carve it. And that's because we have this first U automatically assigned. So I need to put it somewhere right there. Now what I want is that same equal offset on the other side. So the way this works, we need to turn on that second U and then I'm going to copy the parameter from the first U and then paste that relative reference to the other side. But I need to do one minus that value. So one minus, and that gets me an equal offset on both sides. All right. Pretty cool. So that's going to work out perfectly. All right. I don't want the, the pipes to basically intersect each other or the coping and then the railing pipes. And then the second thing we need to take into account is the fact that we don't want our railing to just be sitting right on the edge. It needs to be inset a little bit to make it more realistic. All right. And so to do that, we can actually utilize a sweep node. All right. So let's uh, create a sweep node here. All right. Let's wire this in. This time I do actually want to take advantage of this uh, cross section. So I'm going to go and create a line for this. Let's create a line here like so. And let's go and take a look at the results of this here. So currently um, I need to basically, yeah, there it is right over there. So let's actually untemplate the ramp so I can see what's happening here. So take a look. Yeah. So basically it's currently, you can see the line now is uh, creating this, the, the backside there, which we could have used for the deck back, but in this case, I want to use it for the offset for the railing. So I need to offset it on the inside here. So the direction needs to be changed. All right. So currently it's in the Y direction. I believe if we do negative one in the X, yeah, that's the one I want. So now I have a way to control the offset on the inside there. Well, that's probably going to be just about right. We'll do something like that. Cool. So now I've got this geometry and it has two sides. So remember this, the outside is the border, the exact border of our deck. And then the inside is that offset where we do want to actually place the railing. Okay. So to get just those points, uh, let's utilize an add node. So I'm going to drop down an add node here and I'm going to delete the geometry, but keep the points and because I actually want to turn that geometry. So this sweep geometry into two curves, one for the outside and one for the inside. All right. So we're going to go to the polygons tab. I'm going to do by group. All right, and let's actually go back and turn on the display flag here. So we're going to go to the by group tab in this add node. And then I want to do uh, uh, skip every nth point. And that'll give me two perfect curves. And we don't need the outside one, so we can just blast that away. So I'm going to say blast the outside. So let's blast zero away. And we'll say delete non-selected. Well, actually, no, that's correct. Yep, so that's the inside. Let me actually template the, <laughs> the uh, assembly again. So holding down control. There we go. So now you can see our curve is perfectly offset on both sides. So it's offset away from the coping and it's offset away from the, the uh, top of the deck there. Perfect. So with that, we can move forward now with our railing. So the first thing I want to do is I want to resample this curve. So let's do a resample. 
And this will allow me to have more points in the middle here. All right, so let's go and resample this guy. And I, I actually do want to resample my polygon edge. I don't want it to destroy those corners there. I do want those intact. Awesome. And, uh, you know, while I'm at it, I actually think I want to do a more of a curved type of effect here. All right, so let's go and do that. So I'm actually going to drop down a poly bevel node. All right. And I also need to make sure that I don't feed any UVs. I believe currently this particular curve has some UVs on it. So if I were to just middle mouse click or hit this or hover over this object merge node and turn on this guy right here, you can see that we actually don't have any UVs, which is, you know, pretty good for us. The poly bevel node will crash if there's UVs for this particular uh, technique, at least. So yeah, I think that's going to be good. Cool. I just wanted to make sure of that. So let's feed uh, this curve into there. All right. And then I'm going to, inside of the poly bevel node, I'm going to set its group type to points and then just start to bevel it just a little bit. All right. I want to actually give this a little bit of a curve here. And I think just a little tiny bit will be nice. And then I'm going to put in uh, divisions of two. Cool. So now let's uh, resample all of that. Yep. So we'll resample all of that and let's set the distance to something like one. And I didn't want to do that on the poly bevel. We need to go to the resample and set the length to one. My apologies. And it looks like we need to actually bring this down a little bit. Yeah. Something like that. So 0.36, maybe 0.35 is going to be good for us. You can always change it later. So with that all done, let's do another uh, sweep node here. Actually, in this case, we're not going to sweep. We're going to do a copy to point. So I'm going to copy a, a vertical line to all these points now. All right, so let's drop down a line. And I'm going to feed these guys into there. And look at that. We now have at least our vertical poles here, which is great. All right, so let's change the, the height to something like 0.25. It doesn't need to be huge. Maybe 0.3 will be good. Yeah, that'll be cool. Uh, we, obviously, we'll, we'll expose it. And, you know, while I'm thinking of that right now, why don't we just expose it? So let's go to our type properties and I'm going to go and do a separator again and I'm going to drag this guy out. So we'll do this and I'll call this the um, railing height. Just like so. And we'll make a minimum value of 0.2 like so. And then a maximum value of, let's say, two. I mean, six feet would be pretty high for this stuff because this is all in meters. There we go. Awesome. I'm going to hit apply and accept. So now we have a way to control that value. So what I want to do, I also, you know, want to have the top railing to, you know, have a little bevel right here as well. So we're going to, you know, come over here and then I want it to bend down, but none of these other guys need to have that particular value. So the way, what I need to do is I actually need to uh, group by range the ends here. So let's get a group by range here. All right. And what I want to do is uh, just put this up to our one and one for start and end. So that way I have just the inners and I'm going to call this the, the inner uh, prims like so. And let's drop down a split node because I want to keep, you know, these guys, I don't want to blast them away. So I'm going to drop down a split node and we're going to put that to inner prim. So I'm left with just the inner prims on this side. And then I have those other primitives. So the end primitives on this side. All right. And what I need to do here now is actually fuse together these guys, uh, these corner ones. So let's go and uh, fuse those guys together. So in this case, uh, I just need to increase the snap distance until those guys basically come together as one. Yeah, perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. Okay. And with that, we can go ahead and sweep those guys. So let's uh, sweep these guys really quick. All right. And produce some UVs for them. Uh, we don't need to use the... Uh, the uh, cross section for that. Let's use the round tube. Okay. And we don't need to cap them off or anything like that, but we do need to change the, the railing radius here. And let's actually keep the, I'm going to keep the columns, you know, up to something like that and make it nice and round for the high poly mesh. Yeah. That's looking pretty good. Let's turn off all of our uh, primitive numbers there. Yeah. That's looking great. Cool. All right. So now let's go and take care of the, the top uh, bar for the railing here. All right, so that's going to be uh, this particular um, output right here. We need the, the vertical railings from that. And we also need um, the, the shape that we're creating right here um, after we do the poly bubble. Well, actually, yeah, we can do it from here. Uh, yeah, right off that poly bubble like so. So let's uh, go and merge these two guys together. 
So I am going to uh, drop down a merge node, like so. All right, and let's just take this, this guy from there. So what I need to do is I actually need to transform it up by the same height as our railing height there. So let's drop down a transform node over here. All right, and I'm literally just going to uh, copy this because it's that same value that we need to lift this up. And I just need to put that into the Y translation. Just paste that there. And look at that, we now have that top railing curve. Pretty cool. And you know what, we actually, we should just bevel it differently. Um, yeah, this will work out much better. So I'm gonna take it before we, we bevel it. We'll add our own bevel to this guy. So now I have, you know, a bunch of points here. So let me turn off the templating here. All right, so now I have all these curves. I just need to join all these together. So the first step in doing that, if you remember, we need to fuse these particular points together there. Okay, so we need to drop down a fuse node, like so, and then we do a join. So I'm gonna drop down a join node, like so, and we wanna turn on only connected, and then just make sure we have a single primitive, which we do. And at this point now, I can go and uh, do a poly bevel. All right, so let's actually just copy, let's make a reference copy right here. So I'm gonna say actions, and we're going to say create reference copy so we have the same values. All right, and then let's plug it in down here. I'm gonna hit shift or control S to save. All right, and we'll plug that guy in, and there we go. We now have a nice bevel. And well, while I'm at it, I should increase the amount of beveling uh, points that we have here, just to make it a little bit more clean. Yeah. Cool, that's perfect. So now I can go and sweep that guy. And I, I do want to actually sweep these differently. I want the, you know, the vertical rails to be a little bit smaller than the top rail. All right, so we're going to drop down a sweep node and switch it over to round tube. And we definitely don't want it that fat, but we, we wanted something like, you know, just a little bit bigger than what we had. All right, cool. Let me actually turn on the template for these. And look at that. Yeah, we're looking pretty good. So make it just a little bit bigger. Just a little bit. There we go. Yeah. I'll let you guys play around with it. Awesome. So now we've got a nice, you know, railing for the top. Okay, so let's make sure that we are producing our UVs. So I believe I did these guys already. Nope, I guess not. So I hit uh, Control S to save. And we're going to turn off our normalized computed U's. And then turn off our snap U and V. Let's go to the other guy. And let's compute those UVs. Turn off normalized computed UVs. And then turn off our snapping. So now... Uh, let's merge all these guys together. Let's pull this down here. Let's just uh, select both the sweep notes, hold down Alt, hover over one of the outputs, and then left click and drag to create a merge node. We now have perfect railing for our ramp. So let's copy that metal color. I believe that's the deck. Yeah, let's get the color from the coping over here. Alrighty. And let's drop this guy down over here. And let's check out our UVs by hitting five on the keyboard. Yeah, perfect. We've got all of our UVs nicely done. And then let's group it. Call this railing, like so, if I could spell it correctly. And then we're gonna go drop down a null node. And we'll call this out railing. Awesome, so let's add it to our assembly. Cool, so left click and drag right into there. And now we've got all of our parts and pieces all put together. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna add some normals to this. So let's go and add some normals like so. And that's actually gonna be good for me, just like that, yeah. Okay, so I think with that, we now have our ramp. The last thing we really need to do is just go and uh, do a UV layout. So. You can see all of our UVs are basically, you know, sitting right on top of each other, which is not cool. We need to go and drop down a UV layout node. So let's do that. UV layout. And there we go. So a couple things I usually set up for these guys. I'm going to scale it to match their surface area. And I usually kind of swap these guys around until I get something that I like. That's actually looking pretty good. So I put it on by island position in 3D. And then I at least put it on to 90 degree rotations. Yeah, it looks pretty good. 
And then what I want to do is apply padding between all the target bounds, and I put it up to something like three. That way we don't get any bleeding when we uh, do the mit mapping. Yeah, and then I always turn on the spread islands available space just to kind of utilize as much as I can. You know, we still have some empty space, but, you know, that's to be expected. All right, so with that, we now have our final model. It's all UV. Let's actually drop down a UV visualize node that's in the Side Effects Labs tool set. And I'm going to set this to two. Yeah, look at that. Textile density is perfect all around. And they're not crazy, you know, UVs. Uh, everything's nicely connected. We don't have a ton of small shells. This guy's a little weird, but uh, yeah, we don't have a ton of small shells or anything like that. Uh, it's perfect. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to close out the lecture there. And let's do a quick review of all the stuff we covered in this section, then move on to uh, making the high res and getting all of our textures baked out so we can start texturing. Thanks so much.